Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. Hey, today we're going to be talking about questions that you guys have sent in to Inside PTI, questions that you've you've had on your farm. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, we did an Inside PTI episode and we just said, hey guys, what's on your mind? We know the busy season's coming upon us. We've got harvest, we've got fall uh, fertility or nutrition. Uh, we've got tillage happening. What questions do you have as you think, as you're sitting in that combine or that tractor? What questions, you know, kind of going through your brain uh, that you have? So I thought today we'd share some of the questions that came in. We got a fair amount of questions that came in. I thought we'd share some of, some of those questions with you today. All right, let's dive right in. First question comes from Jeff. Jeff says, Jason, have you seen any advantages to applying a small amount of limestone ahead of planting soybeans, say 250 to 400 pounds or something like that? It appears I always get a yield bump in soybeans after liming. Maybe I should be doing it yearly or annually. Right, Jeff, that's a great question. You know, our liming process, or I guess the most popular liming process, is putting ag lime out in the field. And this usually is a result of getting a new soil test. So a lot of folks are on a a four-year soil test rotation. Every four years, they're addressing their liming situation. That's really popular in this uh, neck of the woods. We are utilizing that type of program to to address soil pH. And I should mention, we are looking at pH values here in central Illinois of acidic soils mainly. I know there's other parts of the world or the country that are going to look at high pH, but we're mainly acidic levels of pH, and we have to apply limestone to bring those pHs up. When we do that, we typically get a nice yield response. We have to do it, otherwise yield will go down. But it's not the only way to address soil pH. I mean, we are looking at this at the PTI farm as part of our soil testing program, but we also have a maintainer program. We're using products like 98G from Calcium Products. It's a pelletized lime. It's a 98% pure calcitic limestone. They grind it to an ultra-fine powder before they pelletize it. And you can see what it looks like right there on the screen. It looks, it, it's a really nice product. It's got good density, uh, similar to that of a, like a map or a dap. And I guess my point here is it spreads really nice and you can add it with other, um, fertilizers like dap or map or potash. And so we're using it as a maintainer. We're putting a small amount of this thing on, you know, a couple hundred pounds of the acre versus tons to the acre with ag lime every four years. We're putting this in manu- or annually as a maintainer program. Question is, does it work? Here's some yield data from 2022. I thought, you know, it worked pretty well for soybeans. We're seeing about a 2.9 bushel yield bump. You then look at the economics. It figured out to be a $17 advantage on the plus side. And I said, hey, this, this looks like it's working pretty well. Let's try to look at a rate study with the Pell Lime to kind of see where the sweet spot is as a maintainer annually with this product. We came in at 100 pound intervals from 100 to 500 pounds per acre. And we developed a really nice bell curve here showing that 300 pounds to the acre gave us the biggest yield bump at about four and a half bushel beans. Uh, but the ROI looked really good too. The ROI came in about $17 an acre, which if you remember my 2022 data, it came in also at $17. So Throwing some nice repeatability, some nice consistency here. And as a maintainer, I think this has been working pretty well for, for us anyway. Now you'd have to look at it on your farm with your pH levels, things like that. But this has been working pretty well for us here at the PTI farm. All right. Let's get into another question. This one comes in from Dean. Dean says, Hey, we've been strip tilling the last couple of years. We are applying dry fertilizer as we strip, but we're not set up to apply anhydrous ammonia nitrogen with it. His question is this, have you ever tested dry urea nitrogen in fall strips? Dean, great question. This has been popular. I've had numerous phone calls on this this past fall and previous years, and I don't have any data. We have not tested this. My main nitrogen program at the PTI farm has been a liquid 32% program, a UAN program, and it's worked out really well. However, due to popularity of questions coming in on urea in fall strip till, I have added it to our protocol this year. And so as we were out doing our fall strip till, you know, there you see my Coon Cross Gladiator strip till rig, my Montag uh, fertilizer cart and air system. As we're putting on DAP and potash in our strips, we said, hey, let's put some urea in and use it since we're already making that pass to see if it can be effective. And 
supplying nitrogen to our corn crop that we're going to plant in 2024. Here's our strips that we're making. These strips are running about seven inches deep. You can't see any fertilizer uh, in these strips because they're down at the bottom. It's uh, seven to eight inches. And so we're trying to protect them over the winter and, and have that, in this case, nitrogen, hopefully available to serve that, that corn crop. What nitrogen are we using? We're using ESN from Nutrien. We're, we're partnering with Nutrien on a 44% encapsulated slow release nitrogen product. And you, you, there's my hand there on the screen. You can see the prills of nitrogen. They are encapsulated. It's slow release. We're going to put it in the bottom of our strip deep. Okay. Seven to eight inches. It's going to be deep enough, protected over the winter time. And then once soil start warming up, this, this slow release nitrogen will slowly become available to our actively going, growing corn crop. At least that's the idea with this. So hopefully we'll have some really good data this next year to, to address this question. But I'm intrigued. I think it looks really nice. I thought application was great. Here's my fall strip. I stopped the rig. I just got out and dug to the bottom of it. And there you can see my, my nutrients there. You can see my potash. You can see my DAP, my diammonium phosphate. And you can see those prills of the ESN. And I'm hoping that since I'm already making the pass in the field, that I can use it as a, as a trip for nitrogen. We will find out. Give me a, give me 12 months and I'll, hopefully I'll have some, some really good data on this. All right. All right, let's go to one more question here and we'll get things wrapped up. This one comes in from Chase. Chase says, Jason, are you using drones at the PTI farm? And if so, how have they been working out for you? Well, Chase, great question. We have been using drones. However, we don't call them drones here at the PTI farm. We call them UAVs, unmanned ag vehicles. I think that is a much more appropriate name for these rigs. Uh, but yes, we've been using UAVs and I think it's a tale of two stories. I think when the UAVs first came out for the, the first two years on this PTI farm, we were excited about the technology, but I'll tell you, I thought they were a burden. I thought they were too, they were too small. Uh, I couldn't put enough product on. I couldn't get enough acres covered with it. And it, I got to the point where I just wanted to load my high clearance rig up with my 1200 um, gallon tank on it and say, let's just get a bunch of acres on this thing and go do it fast. That's where I was at with it. It was just slow. I, I will say that the UAVs applied product correctly. I was intrigued by that, but I just couldn't get enough acres done fast enough. However, <laughs> this year we teamed up with Green Creek Drones. Uh, they brought a T40 here to the PTI farm and we used it all growing season. And I can't tell you how happy we were to get this thing in the field and how happy we were with the response. I thought we had a large enough tank on here now at enough volume. We're getting enough acres done. We're getting them done quickly. We were getting good coverage in the field. And finally, I'm in a spot with UAVs where I feel very comfortable with them. And I think they need to be a big part of this farm during the growing season. And I think a lot of farmers are going to have that mentality as well in the future. And we talk about this T40 for a minute. The game's changed here a little bit. This rig has gotten bigger. We're holding about 10 and a half gallons of product with this rig. And a lot of times we're spraying two, three, four gallons to the acre. And on this research farm here at PTI farm, uh, it's perfect for our situation here. If we get a rain and we can't get a high clearance rig in, it doesn't matter. I can put this thing above the canopy and it just does a great job. There's no cleat mark. There's no compaction. Um, one thing that came up about UAVs the other day was carbon inten intensity scores. And this is, this could be interesting to look at because we're not burning fuel. We're not burning diesel fuel in a high clearance rig. When we make fungicide applications, we got this UAV up in the air and we've got electric batteries here and that's going to give us a higher carbon intensity score. Something to be thinking about here in the short term. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I think this T40 were great for us. Really, really happy with the performance and how fast we were able to get acres done and can't wait to use it again in 2024. And, uh, working with the folks at Green Creek Drones, I have questions about uh, the equipment and technology. What if something breaks and you need somebody to service? That's why we teamed up with Green Creek Drones and, and, uh, worked out really well. Here's some video of us in the field. Look at us supplying these. This is a fungicide this day, but look at that turbulence making those, those leaves move. That's a great thing because it allows us to get that fungicide deep into the canopy to give us as much um, uh, plant protection as possible. Fungicides only move one direction and that's upward. They're not moving in the xylem and phloem of the plant. They're only moving upward. So you got to get it down as deep as you can to get the best protection possible. 
Here's some more videos in the field. Again, look at the turbulence, uh, the props moving the corn leaves. It's just amazing watching this thing work in the field. And I really think that these UAVs um, have done a really nice job applying fungicides, applying insecticides. Now we're going to be, you know, if we can put a dry tank on it, we can look at cover crop applications. Again, we talk about that carbon intensity uh, score on our farms and using cover crops as a way to increase it. These UAVs are going to be a great way of applying some of these cover crops as well. So I'm pretty excited about what's happening with with the UAV technology here at the PTI farm and look forward to it advancing even, even more. All right, so that's all the time we have for today's episode of Inside PTI. Thank you guys for sending in your questions. If you remember, I told you if you send us a question and we air it on Inside PTI, I'd send you a precision planning hat and we are gonna do that. For the three of you that we addressed your question today, you have a precision planning hat coming your way, but the offer still stands. If you guys have questions, Send them to me at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. I'd love to try to answer any questions that you have. And if we air them on Inside PTI, I'll send you a Precision Planning hat as well. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Inside PTI. We will catch you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks so much for watching.